What is going on, Herd? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today, we return back to Forza Horizon 3. And it's going to be a fun one for me. Because I get to drift around one, one of the cars of one of my favorite drifters, Mad Mike Woodette. And, well, he is my favorite drifter by far. Not one of my favorite drifters. He is my favorite drifter, but this is one of his cars. The Rad Bull. Modeled on the new Miata platform. Well, not the newest, but the newer Miata platform, the MX-5. And I'm going to bring you guys through the reason on why we chose this body style. I know that Mad Mike Wadette's Rad Bull is technically a convertible. I know he's got a much nicer spoiler on the back. We're going to go over why we chose this as opposed to the convertible. So I know some of you going to be freaking out in the comments like, blah, 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 like you guys like to do sometimes. And let's just stop that right now. Obviously, there are two MX-5s. One is the newest model, the newest body style, the 2016. And initially, as you can see, the little home screen, the little garage thing down there, I did buy it. This was what I was going to model it after. And then I realized it wasn't actually the body style of the Rad Bull. Now I'm glad I caught this before I did release the video because I know I'd be dealing with all kinds of comments. Now, yes, this is still an accurate build here on this one. Uh, this is the old Rad Bull, the old model. This is the new Rad Bull, the new model. It is, there is two different ones. The newest Rad Bull is the convertible one. It is with the whiter of the two. Obviously, you can see the difference in the liveries. It's much more white dominant, white background. And let's just kind of, let's, let's take a look and see what we can do for customizations on this thing. Okay, so it's exactly the same. It's just going to be a little lip and a little bit of a... Yep, and it is. So it's exactly the same customization. I'm not going to spend the credits on this one, but uh, I will show you the kind of why I led against doing this one to begin with. Mad Mike's cage is a full cage. It goes all the way up front. And the cage on this one... Where we got it here? This one on the roll cage. You can see there, it's just not... <laughs> Not quite the uh, the realistic level. Now, still cool, still a lot of fun. Um, still could be a pretty sweet little build if you're interested in putting this thing together. I figured I'd just specify it. Not going to sit here and waste any more time for you guys. But yes, there is two different Rad Bulls. Well, there might only be one Rad Bull at a time, right? There's only one Rad Bull. But they sold the old model and bought a new model, and now they're rocking this model. So technically, I could have built either one. And it would have been just fine. But I wanted to clarify for all you guys out there so you didn't blow up the comment section saying, Oh, Brax, I'd be wrong. I got to you wrong again. So we did go with this one. That is why. Now let's bring you through what we did for upgrades on this thing. Obviously, Mad Mike Wadette's MX-5 is not your typical MX-5. He has swapped it out with a four-rotor. It was going to initially be a three-rotor, but they they wanted the thousand horsepower mark. So they did go with the four-rotor. So we did also go with the 2.6 liter four-rotor racing engine. I know some people are oh, no, going to be freaking out on there, on there in the comments section. Now, judging by the car, Mad Mike Wadette's car, uh, we did go with the livery that was made by another individual and this is the one we rolled with but rotiform actually makes the wheels that is that are sponsored here and i believe these are like the mlw rotiforms the mlw rotiform so pretty much as close as you can get if not literally the wheels that would that is running on the mx5 or at least when it had this wrap on it he is since wrapped i don't know if it's this is the newest wrapper if it's the white style he has more of a white orient in the uh in his other wrap in the same car that is as well we did leave the front tires the same width but we did widen them up from a 205 to a 235 in the rear and also we are going to be running some i believe sport compound yes sport tire compound although maybe i put i think i'm gonna put race tire compound on them this time around actually um rim size i believe we're running 19 inch rims yes we are the 19s 205 and 19 in the Front, and then it'll be 235 19 so that solves it for that we obviously put in all the drivetrain things so that we can tune the car we also did a, you know we did the brake system we did the springs we lowered it down i am running it um, through we'll go into the tuning here in a minute but um, the anti-roll bars the chassis we did put the roll cage in there we stripped it down to all the way down to the weight reduced all the way stripped even though it doesn't show you a stripped car yeah and then, obviously, once you do that four-rotor racing engine, all you can do is remove the restrictor plate. So we have no restrictor plate in the car. And that brings us up to 718 horsepower, which is still a couple hundred horsepower less than the actual Rad Bull. But you don't hear me complaining. That's going to be all right. We're going to be just fine with that. 
Now we did put on the new wheels there, the new tire compound, so I am going to have to pay for that. I will also shout out the individual that made the wrap. I have to find it here. Now there is some slight differences in these liveries. People make them. They're all going to be a little bit different, uh, but this was the closest one. So shout out here to Hyper Knight 2, whatever NZLR is for his crew, and it is the Rad Bull, the Mad Mike. Mad Mike would dead. Now you can see that, obviously, this is the closest color to the scheme. The, the wheels, the blue wheels are slightly off in real life. They are a slight lighter color. This one doesn't even have blue wheels, and obviously the color is far off. This one, the color is pretty close, but the blue wheels are way too blue. This one, it's too light of blue. This one's pretty close, real close, but if you look, they're black wheels. And this one as well, pretty close, but the, the light blue is just a little light. So we did go with that last one. It is the closest thing I could find. And like I said, I got to give credit where credit is due on that one. Now we will bring you through the tune as well. And I guess this is probably the time to tell you that I've already recorded this damn video once. And I did a lot of, a lot of drifting in it. And then I looked over at the Elgato. And my mic was muted. So we are back in action here. But we did kind of get this thing tuned out how I want it tuned anyways. We're pretty close to it. Um, not a special tune. I didn't download the tune. This is completely just me putting something little together. Uh, running negative 2 degrees camber in the front. Leaving it just straight up in the back. No degrees of camber. We do have the high angle. 7 degrees of angle on the front caster. And no toe as well. Anti-roll bars. I messed with this a little bit. I really don't know a ton about what I want for drifting it soft or stiff or all that stuff. Uh, messed with this a little bit as well. We did raise the front. I think that's probably the most thing to note is we have running a little bit higher in the front than we are in the rear. If you actually pay attention to some of the FD cars. So I'm going to say, no, that's just because they're accelerating. Now, literally, when they're parked, they are, they're higher in the front. Now, I don't know the exact reasoning behind it, so I'm not going to act like I do because I know how I get castrated in the damn comment section for acting like I know something when... I don't know it. I left the brakes alone. I left the door. Well, I guess we did move up the acceleration and deceleration. We just left at 75%. So that is the tune. Mazda's history is a bit of a roller coaster. They started out as a cork company in the 1920s, and their first vehicle wasn't even a car, but a three wheeled truck called the Mazda Go. In 1960, they produced their first coupe. And then it was only seven years before a high-performance tuning division was formed that would become Mazda Speed. They won Le Mans in 1991 before the Wankel engine they used was permanently banned from the event. They did strike gold with the Miata, a zippy little roadster which, with over 940,000 of them on the road and counting, holds the record for the best-selling two-seat convertible. Now, I will say that I am a big fan of the rotary engine. I'm a big, big fanboy of the Mazda Drift game. And I am a big, 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 real, real big fanboy of Mad Mike Woodette. I think his style is absolutely sick. His commitment is off the charts. And um, that's what makes or breaks him every dang run. So I'll always like Mad Mike. He'll always be my favorite. And good luck ever trying to take that away from him. Now I still am here. We're going to try to find ourselves a, a decent drift lobby. I know some people are probably pretty burnt on seeing the drifting in the parking lot. So just know, guys, that I'm slowly trying to put together a private events crew. A crew that I can reach into anytime I'm online, see who's online, and kind of invite out of there. Here's the issue. Right now I don't have that. So as of now, we just got to kind of rely on the open lobbies. And unfortunately, the open lobbies that I've found thus far are pretty much all well the drift lobbies i should say pretty much always just drifting in this parking lot okay they're gonna be drifting this line i'm not good at drifting this line yet so maybe we can get something going here These guys are drifting slow as hell. Uh, I think I know why I'm drifting so much faster than the other guys. Though. It's because of my damn tire compound. I must say that I'm 
growing more and more fond of this style of the lineup in there. It's much different than what I've been doing, so it allows you to stop and kind of get a good train going with everybody instead of crashing and trying to catch back up. So I do enjoy it. This guy's like, I'm not leading. Oh, the first gear there, my bad. Oh, what line are we taking here? He punked me. I am just failing epically at trying to keep the same speed as them. I, my car wants to hook up way too much, so we are going to go back down to these and go from there. Get a lot of practice to do. I got a lot of practice to do. Seems like this red uh, RX-7 is much, uh, God, I can't even talk in drift. That's another big thing. I just need to focus. But this is the closest build on the, on the track to me right now. It's actually losing me a little bit when I don't get a decent drift. Oh, we got a Mazda train going on here. I don't know how much of a train it is when I'm way back here, but... Oh, what the hell was that? I tapped something. Tapped some damn debris. Let's definitely get a few more little try to get some decent tandems. I have not gotten one good tandem yet where I've been where I've been following. So I'm far from uh, <laughs> far from where I want to be at in this dang game.
cards. Turn left. I will say I'm a much bigger fan of this, this line up and take off and go. It allows you to stay a lot closer to the to the rest of the group and whatnot. I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to when we can get a group together that I'm actually acquainted with, someone that we can kind of all roll in the same class, somewhere that we can all get a good train going. And I think there's a lot of possibilities with this game, for sure. So I think we're waiting for this guy to kind of line up over here or just get the, get the F off the track. Oh, there you go, son of a god. That's when I get frustrated, where we just start making up our own lines and it just completely throws you off. I'm setting up real good for a tandem and then we're gonna go with the, we're gonna go with that. So, how do you get around that without just playing with people you know? And like I said, I think I said that about five times in this video. So what do we got to do? We got to start establishing some lobbies of playing with people we know. All right, homies and homies, ladies and gentlemen of the herd, I think that's where we're going to leave this one off. We are going to call it a night on this video. So I had a lot of fun on this one. Again, this is just one of those professional builds. Well, I shouldn't say professional builds. A build modeled after a real professional car. And uh, it's fun. I'm definitely going to continue on with doing this. But I do want to also make a point to say that this isn't all I'm going to be doing on fours. There's a lot of different ideas I have. And this is simply just me adapting. I don't want to do a... Ah! Don't want to do a spin. I'm trying to save up for the spins for a video in itself. I'm just blowing them away. Oh, and another one. God damn it. I had like 10 of them racked up. I got eight of them. I just blew them away. All right. Real cool. Real cool, Forza. As I was saying, guys, that is where we're definitely going to leave it off. I appreciate everybody tuning in, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing the videos. If you're sharing the videos, I got a lot of learning to do. I don't need to hear you nitpick every single little action. You need more angle. You need the clipping points. You need to do this. You need to do that. I know. I know. I got a lot of things to do, but if you expect me to do them all by the second video, I don't know where the hell you started at, but it definitely ain't where I'm starting at. With that said, as always, I hope you all stay happy. Stay positive, and we will definitely speak to you next time.